In this last Japan week, uh, during our presentation or our, our uh, meeting with uh, several uh, Japanese masters of other code UARTs, and uh, along these very uh, pleasant and, and interesting moments, uh, some Japanese masters were quite interested in our Jujutsu, our classical Jujutsu, and uh, how was our, our Katami no Hiko techniques, because it's, it's widely known that um, Katami no Hiko from Budo, from uh, modern Gendai Budo, it's quite different from the ancient uh, Jujutsu. And this Jujutsu is not uh, so well known, so uh, we would kindly and uh, respectfully uh, dedicate this, this video to these masters which you know, so uh, politely came to us uh, asking how would our Jujutsu or Katami no Giko be. So first of all we have to know that in the Chuden study we don't have the, um, the body movements only uh, in the Katami no Giko in Jujutsu we can always have that Tanto which a samurai would uh, often carry um, as part of the, of the Daisho, as we know. So, first of all, we can use it at any time. And so, our thought uh, changes from this point of view to the, all the danger that comes with this kind of uh, practice. It's also important to note, it's a key note, that uh, this is mainly an anthropological uh, study and, um, and point of, of view. So, We are all quite protected, and we are all uh, aware of the of all the degree of danger which may happen, because anyone can draw his tanto, and anyone can use, you know, without any kind of uh, rule, uh, any mechanism he wants to. So we see we wouldn't just approach and get and get close to him, you know, just um, uh, be uh, be in care with his main weapons and his main. Um, mechanisms which can be really seen. So first of all is the degree of violence in this kind of study is quite evident. So for example, if I want to get to pass along to his to his back, I would first get him to defend a very powerful attack. I can pass. Once I'm here, he knows the dangers of eyes so he can close. So I may get his get his ear elbow if I have this angle so I have restricted his arm I can all, all from sudden just jump and have my knee over his head I can have elbow again if I have this angle I can try to take his throat out and P again when I strike and pee in his head from the impact gets down violently or Kakato enters one more time once I'm here I have found an angle already so before getting for the classical Vijigatami, for example, I have to know that he may try to attack with his elbow over my, my, my face. Even in a state of um, desperation in which he would, do, he would try to, uh, to move you know, the way he can. So every posture has to be well measured you know, and well fit. So I have to get his arm and his shoulder well restricted. So before entering to Jigatami here, I have to have the right posture and make sure that he won't be able to use his tanto. So restrict his arm. As I'm here, maybe with just one arm, it's kind of difficult to uh, fulfill or to go through the Jigatami. So I have tanto over, I have kakato over his neck, over his face, uh, stepping or doing a, a Hakato Uchi, one more time, through here, so I have the space I need for this, and then finally, so I would have Now say, for example, I can also put a movement to get him where I would want, so let's, let's say I will try to enter a mawashi ashi uchi violently. So as he defends, I can put here and here and here. So from here, what I have is I have gained one arm of him. So I lose my weight 
to come to Ushiro no Kamae. So this is a very favorable position because he is quite unprotected here. So from here, I have already arm. But when this arm enters, if you're not putting it kindly, what will happen is, very slowly, I'll lift his arm so we can see. His arm will enter and I will do, you know, uh, tearing his nose, tearing his eye, tearing his mouth. Kakato, uh, MB, and in his arm, Kakato, and head violently over the ground. Once head knocked down, and knee, and Kakato, and uh, MP again, and gaining his arm, and always aware of his tanto. And at any movement, if I have this kind of position here, I can use his own tanto. Then, because he knows of this danger, he grabs my arm. And he will try, for example, to... Yes, to gain it completely, because he knows the, the kind of danger I have here. So from here, I will restrict his, his movement in Ushiro no Kamai one more time. And my weight here. So, from here, he is protecting his head. I cannot reach eye so easily. I cannot reach ear so easily. So. I have to use other mechanisms, and so here comes the interesting study of weight and leverage in classical jiu-jitsu. So, I gain one arm first. Once I got one arm, I have this, this opening here. From this opening, I can one more time, kakato. I can one more time, eye, ear, and once I'm here, I can isolate his, his, his head and have cutting tanto. And yet, if I didn't have that, that tanto, if we follow this up just as a, just a study, once I'm here, I can always move on to a, a gigatami in a more inertial way. So, from here, and hitting kakato, kakato, kakato over the face. But he knows the danger of this. So when he comes here, he locks, he locks his arm. So I can't move. And he'll try to get his hips further from, from, from me so he can regain this position. So he will try also a atemi, a mawashi uchi from, from here, which makes me defend myself. So what I can do from here is, once he locked, I have to reach under a short distance, his neck, and instead of trying backwards, I have to rotate my hip to the side. To the side. And from here, isolate his shoulder and move with this kuzure of the jigatami. These were two very uh, simple sequences with the sole purpose of um, illustrate the anthropological point of view of a katami logiko, of an ancient katami logiko, you know, which, uh, which includes tanto, which includes attacks uh, in eye, in uh, uh, major points, in the, in the key points of the human body. Thank you very much.